Katie. I work at the Fleming Island Public Library. Welcome to Virtual Storytime. Now in Storytime, we get to read books and sing songs, get silly, learn some cool new stuff. But first, let's sing our welcome song. So I'd like you to get your hands ready for clapping so we can sing. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. Read big books and small books and short books and tall books. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. All right, friends. So this summer, our theme is Tales and Tales. Those two words sound completely alike, right? But this one is tales like what animals have. And this one is stories like fairy tales. So for story time, each week we are going to visit a habitat, an animal habitat. That is where animals live. So this week we're going to the forest. Now the fo in the forest, a lot of big animals live there and also teeny tiny animals live there. There are lots of green trees and there's also grass and there's ground cover. So today I thought because the forest has a lot of trees, we would learn how to say tree in sign language. That's when we talk with our hands. So for tree, we're gonna lay one hand down and we're gonna put the other one up like a tree. Now spread those branches and let them wave in the wind. That's tree. Yeah. All right, so for our book today, we are going to read Moles Hill by Lois Ellert. Moles Hill, a woodland tale. It was dark in the woods, but not everyone was sleeping. The stars were out, and so was Fox. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Fox knew that sound. It was Mole digging a tunnel. Another hump of dirt, snarled Fox. Where's, there's a, where there's a mole, there's a mess. Digging tunnels was what Mole did best. Always on the lookout for a juicy worm for breakfast. But once in a while, she took a break and popped outside. That's when she found the note. Mole. Dear Mole, meet us tonight at the maple tree. Fox, skunk, raccoon. I wonder what her friends want. When the sun went down, Mole hurried to the meeting. We're planning a path to the pond, said Fox, and your hill is in our way. It must go. Fox says, when the maple leaves turn red and orange, you'll have to move, said Raccoon. Better listen to Fox. He's got big teeth. Mole snout quivered. This was not good news. Mole went home. She did not want to move. She loved her home right where it was. Suddenly, she had an idea. Some days later, Raccoon and Skunk strolled by Mole's Hill. It looked bigger. I wonder what Mole is up to, Raccoon said. Each night, Mole kept digging and digging, dumping the dirt on top of her hill. Many moons passed, the hill grew bigger and bigger. It was time for the next step. Mole gathered seeds she had saved and waited for the full moon. She climbed her hill, planting the seeds in the dirt as she went along. Soon the flower seeds grew up and burst into bloom, and the grass seeds inched up and made a furry carpet. Mole enjoyed her hill for the rest of the summer. Look at all those pretty colors on Mole's hill. Then one day, the maple leaves turned red and orange. Just like that, summer was over. Raccoon and Skunk had forgotten all about Mole.
So when Fox sent them to see if she had moved, they were in for a big surprise. What a hill, said Raccoon. What a pickle, said Skunk. If we make Mole move now, she'll take this great hill with her. Fox was not going to believe this. Of course he didn't. He had to see that hill with his own two eyes. Mole knew he'd come sooner or later. She was waiting. Fox circled Mole's hill on his furry feet. I've been thinking, he said, what we need is a tunnel. Then our path could go through your hill. Can you dig it, Mole? I can, said Mole. And she did. And that's the end. Oh, I love that they came up with a good compromise. So, in that book, we talked about some of the smaller animals that live in the forest, but I think there's some other ones that we should talk about. So we're gonna look for animals by picking up our binoculars. So can we look around for animals? And then what are we looking for? I'll give you some clues and then you can guess. All right, ready? Get your binoculars out. There's something in the forest I can't really see. There's something in the forest. What could it be? I am big, brown, and furry. What could I be? Could I be a bear? Grrr! Yeah, I think I'm a bear. All right. Now let's look for some other animals. Put your binoculars up. There's something in the forest I can't really see. There's something in the forest. What could it be? I have a long red bushy tail and pointy ears. What do you think I could be? Hmm, how about this one? This one's a fox. He slinks through the forest. See his bushy tail? All right, let's look for another animal. There's something in the forest I can't really see. There's something in the forest. What could it be? I am teeny tiny and I go squeak, 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 squeak. What kind of animal do you think that could be? How about our little friend, the mouse? Squeak, 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 squeak. Yeah, he's a little mouse, so he scurries along the woodland floor. One last animal we can look for. There's something in the forest I can't really see. There's something in the forest. What could it be? I also have a long bushy tail, but I am tiny and I love to eat nuts. It's a... Squirrel! Yeah, and the squirrel lives high up in the trees. All right, so now that we talked about some of our woodland friends, I would like to talk about that last one that we just saw. So it's a squirrel. I have a rhyme where we can act like squirrels. So can we shake our bushy tails? And then can we wrinkle up our squirrel noses? And put a nut between our squirrel toeses? All right. So I have a couple of squirrels that we can play with. Let's see, what color is this first squirrel? It's red. So let's sing with red squirrel. Ready? Red squirrel, red squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Red squirrel, red squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Crinkle up your nose, put a nut between your toes. Red squirrel, red squirrel, shake your bushy tail. All right, so that was fun. So let's play with another squirrel. What color is this one? This one is green. Let's shake our bushy green tails. Green squirrel, green squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Green squirrel, green squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Crinkle up your nose, put a nut between your toes. Green squirrel, green squirrel, shake your bushy tail. All right, last one. This squirrel friend is gonna look a lot like the ones we see in our backyard. So this one is brown. So let's shake our tails with the brown one. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. Crinkle up your nose, put a nut between your toes. Brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. All right, let's shake one more time. 
brown squirrel, brown squirrel, shake your bushy tail. All right, great job, guys. All right, so that is all the time we have for virtual story time today. But first, let's sing our goodbye song. So I love to sing Skinnamarink at the end of my story times. So we're gonna start by putting one hand down, and then we're gonna put one hand over it, and we're gonna wave. And then we're gonna switch hands. And then we get to say, I love you. How do we say that? We point to our eyes for I, we give ourselves a big hug for love, and we point to each other for you. So when do we love? We love in the morning when the sun's nice and high. We love in the afternoon. We love in the evening when the sun's low. And then when the moon comes up. All right, ready? Skin a marinky dinky ding, skin a marinky do. I love you. Skin a marinky dinky ding, skin a marinky do. I love you. I love you. Ah. Uh...